Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. When I was a child, my family would sometimes visit my grandparents down in the lower part of South Carolina. From time to time, we would go out walking on the dirt roads that allowed access for farmers to get to their fields, and whenever we went on those walks, my grandfather always took a hoe along. He wasn't planning to do any farming. No, the hoe was in case we ran into any snakes, which we did often. Some were rattlesnakes, and I'm not sure what others were, but I still have vivid memories of my grandfather with his hoe taking on those snakes and killing them. Ever since then, I've given snakes a very healthy respect by keeping my distance. Nevertheless, if you read the Bible, you can't ignore that snakes are a pretty significant part of the story at times. This week I want to highlight some of those stories and talk about what they mean. And the first thing we need to talk about is the fact that most often the Bible doesn't call them snakes, but serpents. That may not seem like a big distinction to you, but in the Bible there are creatures with wings and sea monsters. You may have heard of the Leviathan, for example. And all of these, along with snakes, are called serpents. And what that means is that in passages like the one we will look at today, how the serpent tempts Adam and Eve to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, we don't really know if it was a snake or some other kind of creature. In addition, the term serpent can also refer to anything that is evil or working against the way of God. Sometimes, for example, Egypt is referred to as a serpent, and the prophet Jeremiah speaks that way about Babylon. The word in Hebrew means trickster. And trickster is certainly fits the way the serpent appears in the Garden of Eden. When God placed Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, God also gave them a vocation. They were to take care of the garden. The way the Bible says it, they were to tend and keep it. And perhaps sometime we should talk about that as, as what we humans are supposed to do and how we are currently caring for God's creation. In the garden was a tree called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now Adam and Eve had been given pretty free reign to eat of most anything in the garden except for this tree. And frankly, I don't think there was anything magical or special about the fruit of this tree. The point was, God had forbidden it. And if you ate of it, your disobedience of God led to knowing the difference between good and evil. So the serpent appears and is one of only two animals in the Bible with the ability to talk. Balaam's donkey is the other one. And what is interesting is that what God had presented as a command, do not eat of this tree, the serpent recasts as an option. You can eat or not eat. Even more, the serpent casts the temptation in ways that it could be seen positively. Isn't that the way temptations so often work? You see, what the serpent presented to them was that if you eat of this tree and know the difference between good and evil, you will be like God. Isn't that a good thing? Aren't we supposed to try to be like God? I know my grandchild tries to be like his father. There's a bit more to this story that we will talk about tomorrow, but maybe that's enough for now. Maybe it's enough today to notice how sneaky temptation can be. Maybe it's enough to think about how temptations seem to present themselves in a good light and disguise how they take us away from the way of God. Maybe it's enough to point out how hard it is for us to consistently think through the implications of what is set before us to make sure we are aligning ourselves with God. Temptations are oh so enticing. Our call is to follow the way of God. All ways. Every way. 
Maybe it's time we should take our hoe around and chop those temptations to bits. Thanks for watching, and remember to let this day belong to God.